Hello up bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Stranded Deep tutorial today. If you find this guide useful and any of my other Let's Plays, news and info about all the survival games you've come to enjoy on console or PC, make sure you've got notifications on. And let me take you through everything you need to know about making anecdotes to poison pretty much all the consumables that you need to know. So, you may have been poisoned and that may have been happening to you. Although I was going after a very poisonous fish here. That is the lionfish. Bear that in mind. You're going to need that later if you want to make shark repellent. That's what I'm going to be showing you today. How to make the shark repellent. How to make gauze. How to make antidote for poisons. Also how to make aloe salve as well. Which helps you if you get sunburn. And I'm also going to show you how to breathe longer underwater. All using coconuts and various plants. I'm also going to show you how to farm today. That's really important, particularly for the poison. You will get poisoned a lot. There is a lot of the purple starfish around. And this is the plant you're looking for, Pippi. There's usually only one on each island unless you're really, really lucky. That's why it's so important that you start growing it. Because you need two Pippi plants to make one antidote. This is the purple plant, just another reaffirmation what it looks like. Here's the lionfish a bit closer, and you can get poisoned, I think, from snake bites too, including sea snakes like these ones, and of course sea urchins. These don't move around as much, but they still are pretty deadly. You'll often find them stuck on the edges of wrecks. So, lots and lots of things can poison you, be careful. If you get poisoned on the first day, it will start draining your health. And no matter how much you make sure you've got a full belly and full water, that's how you can replenish your health normally, it will still keep draining it. Make yourself as many coconut canteens as possible. To make the canteen, or flask as it's properly called, then you need to get a whole coconut, one of the yellow ones, and then mix it with some lash and you'll make your coconut canteen. Now these can be reused lots and lots of times, so it's always good to have a couple around you and maybe just have the base ingredients nearby. You don't necessarily have to waste too many coconuts, but I've made some a bunch of them today just to show you. So two pippy plants will cure yourself if you get poisoned. If you get accidentally poisoned within a few moments after being poisoned the first time, or while you're still being poisoned, it doesn't stack the poison effect doesn't stack but you will receive some damage from the sting itself so don't worry you can't be poisoned to death super super quickly because you keep running into the snakes the next one we're going to be talked about is if you get sunburn and that's where you need the aloe vera one and that's pretty much pretty easier to get there's normally always always two aloe vera plants on every island more or less all of these flasks or potions will have a little bit of a lasting effect so when you take them if you get poisoned immediately straight after taking an antidote it should hopefully block it likewise for the aloe vera it will stop you getting burnt for a little while afterwards you can check this on your watch in the effects section this plant right here is called the Ajuja. You see it there, it's got a purple top. Two of these, and this will help you to breathe underwater for longer. So this is really effective while exploring the shipwrecks. I'm gonna take one now, you can see all of my little concoctions I've got going on. And we're gonna go and test some of them in the water right now with the breath effect. It really does extend how fast the bar goes down your stamina bar this or your oxygen bar. Handy. So you can really go underneath and swim a bit longer. So absolutely use these. Much more easier to use than the breath canisters or the air canisters that you find. It's much quicker and better to use one of these bad boys. Then we've got the shark repellent, which is pretty expensive as it needs an antidote flask as well as a lionfish. Now you can spear the lionfish and as long as you don't it can't have it come and charge you straight away or come near you, you shouldn't get stung by it. You should be able to just spear it quite quickly and easily. I actually got caught by the crown of thorn starfish just below me. Once you've made it, this is what it does. It stops sharks from getting you. So also be warned that once you've got this fish on your spear you can take the spear off of the fish and you won't get stung then either it's only when the fish are alive that it stings you um here you go here's the sharks this is what it does so it gives you a big opportunity to go to some of the deeper harder places where there's lots of these sharks or maybe even bigger ones and the last one is a ghoul's coconut. Now this relies on the two fruits that you can collect. Now again, they're normally only one bush of each kind on an island, but they do grow back a lot quicker than some of the other stuff. This is the Kura, which will replenish your food and a little bit of water. But if you use it with the other fruit, the Kawawawa, if I said that right, you'll be able to make the ghouls and that replenishes you if you get cut. Normally, if you face a boar and it cuts you, this is the best thing to heal it up. 
And here's the kuruwara, pretty much looks like a pear. Now these fruits spoil quite quickly if you leave them on the ground. So it's best to keep them in your inventory. They still will spoil, but they don't spoil as quickly while they're on your person. So that is it for the coconut sort of potions. You can have more consumables that do health benefits. So bandages are made out of slashing and cloth. And then you've also got the splint, which is two lashings and two sticks. So if you break your bones from a fall or big drop, that's what you need to fix yourself with a splint. Right, now it's time to get yourself a little farm. This is really important, particularly it's the pippy. That's the first plant you want to try growing first of all. There's different style crop plots, but the basic one is the wood farming plot, which is lashing, four sticks, and a crude hoe. You need the hoe to build it, just like you need a hammer when you're building base parts or vehicle parts. You need the hoe if you want to plant any farming items. Just simply make it go green wherever you want to place it and you can start growing whatever food groups you want. You can grow aloe, you can grow a juja, you can grow the cura and the kuara fruits, you can also grow the pippi obviously and you can grow potatoes. Potatoes! Here I am planting my pippi. It will come with one water and then you've simply just got to make sure the water doesn't drain. Use a coconut flask to carry water back and forth or make yourself a coconut skin or a leather skin bag to carry more water. Feed it for a few days of water and two to three days later you'll have a brand new pippi plant. And that is pretty much it, other than just give you some bonus stats about some of the potions. The aloe valve will stop stun stroke and prevent some burn. Shark repellent is going to keep sharks away for 12 hours. That's a hell of a long time. The breath boost actually gives you a boost of 50% for free in-game hours. So it's not just like one-time use. It will stay with you that long. And the gauze does stop bleeding when it's used. It has exactly the same effects as bandages. I hope this video has been useful. If it has, please make sure you give me a like. And like I said, go and check out all my other guides and tutorials I've got coming for you. Much, much more for Stranded Deep, showing you how to survive and pretty much how to build a gyrocopter with all this junk that I'm accumulating. Until next time, Ratbags, I will see you later.